Maybe you're like me, and sometimes you struggle with designing maps for your stories and your role-playing games. Maybe that's because what you have in your mind of what the map should look like never ends up on the page. Or, more likely, it doesn't look as good as you would hope. Hi, I'm Woody. This is the Woodland Fellowship, a channel where storytelling and adventure gaming meets. And I just generated this map right here that we see uh, using a free open source program. And I didn't have to do any drawing. I used uh, various levels of layering and different blending effects. And I just let the computer do all the hard work for me. So if you are interested in generating a map like this one that looks kind of like a uh, very pixelated <laughs> satellite photo uh, in order to use in your stories and game designs, here, check out how I did it. All right, so we are going to begin with uh, using a program known as paint.net. Uh, that is the, the name of the program. It sounds like it's a website, but it's actually the, the program. Uh, it's a completely free open source. Uh, you could use any other program most likely, as long as you can do uh, layers and special blending effects like that. Uh, but yeah, let's just get started. We are going to begin with just a blank canvas. I'm gonna make sure I have black and white selected. Uh, as my primary and secondary colors uh, active in my palette. And what we're going to do is we are going to go up to Effects, go down to Render, and then Clouds. It's going to default to some sort of thing, probably like this. I'm going to move that, uh, that window over so we can see it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to increase the scale all the way maximum so that way we are as close as possible as we can i'm going to keep the roughness at about uh, 0.5 uh, i would say either a 0.55 or 0.6 at the absolute most um, actually i'm going to try 0.5 I, uh, 0.55 i think that'll work pretty well uh, basically the way to know if you are choosing uh, a good option or if you want to reseed this is if uh, where you see things that are white or lighter colored, that is going to be higher in altitude. Things that are dark or black are going to be lower in altitude. Uh, so it looks like we have a kind of interesting shape here. Uh, I'm going to try, yeah, let's do this one instead. This one looks good. Okay, so I'm going to hit OK. So what I'm going to do next uh, is I'm actually going to duplicate this layer, uh, mainly because we are going to be manipulating each of these layers and then blending them. Uh, so I'm going to actually duplicate this three times, so I have a grand total of four. I, I'm only going to need three, but I like having that fourth one just in case I make a mistake. I can always go back uh, and then redo some things here. I'm going to take this top layer. I'm going to rename this Cookie Cutter. And you will find out uh, shortly in uh, a little bit of why I call it that. The one right below it, I'm going to call it Mountains. And then the one right below that, I am going to call Water. Now I'm going to go back and select my cookie cutter uh, layer. And then I'm going to actually make an adjustment. So right at the top here where you see adjustments, I'm going to go down and select Posterize. What this is doing is it is just simplifying the number of colors present uh, in that image, uh, just like what you would see on a printed poster. And we are going to actually decrease this all the way down to two. So you only have black and white. Now, as you're looking at this uh, as in this particular shape, kind of makes an interesting heart-shaped uh, landscape there, you can uh, assume that anything that is white is going to be a land mass. Anything that is black is going to be water. Now, I like this, but I think I'd like the, the shape of things a little bit better if I inverted it, where instead of all of this black, watery space. I want that to be a land instead. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to actually invert all of these colors here. And because everything is still black and white, that'll make the inversion of colors uh, not make anything look weird. So I'm going to do another uh, thing here. Now, as a part of this, I'm also, I don't want to forget to invert the colors of all of my other layers here. So that way it all matches together. Okay, um, I'm going to keep background the same because I'm not even going to be using that background. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to make sure I have my cookie cutter uh, layer selected, and I'm going to go to my magic wand, 
Yes, that way it can do some auto selection for us to make this go a little bit faster. And we are going to select anything that is black. So I'm going to go ahead and click here and you can hold control to add additional selections to it. And you're noticing that it is uh, automatically figuring out where uh, the edges are. So I'm just clicking all of these here. Yeah, sure, I'll do this tiny one too. All right, everything, as far as I can tell, should be selected. So what I'm going to do, while this is all selected, I'm just going to switch layers, so that way it will apply any changes or effects that I'm doing to this other layer. And then I'm just going to hit the Delete button. I'm going to, and so I just deleted the shape of all of the uh, the black spaces on my cookie cutter from the mountain uh, layer. And so in order to see it a little bit better, I'm going to actually raise the mountain layer above it so you can actually see it. And boom. All right. So you can tell that we already have uh, a pretty high altitude-ish area here uh, and so on. So it looks pretty cool. We're not done yet though. So what I'm going to do and so I'm going to go up to the effects area. I'm going to hit stylize and I'm going to choose relief. And so what this is going to do further is it is going to uh, help make it really look like it's standing out in comparison to the water. Now it will default to a 45 degree angle. This is just changing uh, the appearance of a light source in the direction that the light is shining on it. Uh, so you can make it be pretty much whatever you want, but I like making it be 45 degrees on this first one. And then I just hit OK and that is finalized. Now we're going to do something else. I'm going to add another layer above this and I'm going to rename this one Surface. And then before I'm done, I'm going to choose a blend mode of difference. Now, again, this is not necessarily intended to be a full tutorial on how to do everything in paint.net, um, but this is ultimately how to use paint.net in a lot of these similar types of blending modes uh, in order to do this potentially in other programs as well. So I'm just naming the surface and I'm choosing difference as a blend mode. Now there's nothing currently on this new layer uh, for it to do in the blending just yet. Uh, but what it will do, especially in this software, is that uh, when you have a blending effect, it will actually blend it with everything below it uh, accordingly. So what I'm going to do now on my surface layer I'm going to choose effects. I'm going to go to render. I'm going to go to clouds again. Now I'm going to move this out of the way so we can see it a little bit better. Now it looks kind of weird, right? Kind of darkened and you're like, what are you doing? What we're going to do, we're actually going to increase our roughness here to 100% or 1.0. And we're going to ignore anywhere that we are indicating is going to be water. So this really bright white and black area, uh, we are going to be deleting this in a bit. So we want to be looking at the area where there's a landmass. And what this is going to be doing is indicating a, a more specific height map. And because it's blending with the layer below it, it should align relatively closely to the, uh, the basic height map of the mountains layer that we had previously. So you can just reseed this until you find something that you think looks pretty good. What you're looking for is this is going to be specifics for like a mountainy area to actually see the real mountains and what that can look like. Um, actually, I really like this one, so I'm going to go with this. But it does make it kind of hard to see a lot of these specifics here, so I'm going to uh, hide this layer just for the moment. I'm going to go back down to my cookie cutter, and I'm going to select all of these black areas once more. All right, so I have all of the black areas selected. So I go back up to my surface layer and I activate that and I'm going to just hit delete again. And then so I'm going to uh, revisualize this so that way we can see it a little bit better. And that looks pretty good. And you might be thinking to yourself, hmm, yeah, it, but it looks really stark. So we're going to do something else here and uh, this is probably going to blow your mind. So I'm going to go back up to effects and then stylize and I'm going to choose relief again, kind of like how we did on the mountain layer. But this time, because we have all of these really, really specific uh, spots, it really makes the, the mountain area really pop. So similarly, you can make the, the, the light source direction be whatever you want. Uh, you could either choose to have it be matching the original one that you have to your mountain layer. I like having it go against the grain a bit, um, but you could also make it go 
uh, maybe, do I want it to, no, yeah, I'll go against the grain here. So in order to make this go easier, I'm just going to type it in here. Whoa, that would be way too much. All right, perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now, hopefully you can start to see where a lot of these land formations are beginning and shaping here. Uh, so what we will do now is because the difference blending mode uh, really starts screwing up some things when you start adding some color uh, to the map, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to merge these two layers down. So the surface and the mountain layers are going to become one layer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and it will maintain its mountains name. So you can do, 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 turn that on and off. Uh, so a simple change that you can make here just to make a good land uh, color is just to make it all sepia tone. So I'm going to make that adjustment on that layer so it has that nice brownish color. Now, I really like the stark mountains in this top area and just the, the dark areas and so on, but some of these other uh, high points don't really have the same punch to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate this layer. So I have two of these mountain layers. I'm going to make this top one of those. I'm going to edit this here. I'm going to add this blending mode. I'm going to make it have an overlay. Yeah, that looks pretty good here. So that is going to... Uh, make the, the, the lighter areas of an image brighter and the darker areas of an image darker. Uh, so that looks pretty good as well. All right, now we're not quite done yet. We're gonna add another layer. I'm gonna go ahead and edit this. I'm gonna label this one trees and I'm gonna make this blend mode also overlay. All right, now there's nothing here, but you can already tell what am I going to put here. So what I'm going to do is uh, actually change the colors on my palette. I'm going to keep one of the colors be black, but I'm going to make the other one uh, maybe a nice dark kind of pine green color. And I'm going to, uh, now that I have that selected, I'm going to go back up to my effects. I'm going to render and render clouds. I can move this window so we can see it a little bit better. I'm going to keep my scale and roughness uh, at the maximum there. And what you can see is that it is blending these mountains with these green splotches. And so you can reseed this until you have uh, what really what you're looking for in terms of particular image. And uh, as you're playing around with this, you can do other colors besides green uh, in order to have some really unique uh, layouts and, and map designs and so on. I really like a lot of these. This one looks pretty good. I'm going to keep reseeding it, though. Yeah, I like that, mainly because we have uh, a lake here, and I want to have uh, a little bit of greenery around it, because that would make that would make a lot of sense. OK, perfect. All right, so that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Then I'm going to go back to my cookie cutter. And you guessed it, we are going to select all of the black areas on the map. Now it is very easy to uh, accidentally miss some. So I'm actually going to turn off all of this just in case. Yep, I missed one right there. Let me turn off my mountains here too. Yep, I missed these here also. Look at that. All right, I'm going to go back up to my trees and I'm going to hit delete. I'm going to just activate everything again, so that way we can uh, see what that looks like. Now, that's looking pretty good. We need to do one more thing. And what we're going to do, make sure that your trees layer is selected. Go back up to effects, then to stylize. And you guessed it, we're going to do another round of relief on this. And that's really going to make uh, the various trees and forests of the area pop. Yeah, that's looking that's looking really cool. So as you can see, it really makes the the varying colors of green stand out. So you have some areas that definitely look like forests, other areas that look like meadows and fields, all just in the variances of the the green and how it does the blending effects. And I didn't have to do much else with this. All right, now almost quite done. Uh, but if you remember, I had labeled this uh, particular layer here water. So I'm going to bring this up above my cookie cutter so you can start to see a little bit of uh, what this is going to be. And because this is all in black and white, I want to manipulate this layer to be more of a blue color. And so that way we can see the various depths of the water. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to do adjustments. There's a couple ways that you can do this. Uh, the way that I recommend doing it on, in this case is to do curves. So when you bring this up, it will default to a luminosity. 
which is just an overall brightness modifier that you can do. But I'm going to switch it to RGB, which stands for red, green, blue. I'm going to deactivate red and green because I only want to modify the blue. And I'm going to increase it. I usually put it right about there. Uh, so it's a pretty even increase in both the light and the darker colors into a blue. But that kind of has a purpley color. Like, yeah, that can still be okay. But I'm going to get rid of some red. Removing red from purple will make it more blue. All right. Yeah, that has a really nice sky blue color but it has a little bit too much green in it. You can probably keep it the way that if you like it, but I'm going to reduce my green just a little bit. Yeah, that looks really, really good. Okay, and I hit okay, and boom, you have uh, the very start of your map, and now you can start zooming in and exploring, finding areas where you might put maybe a city location and icons on higher levels and start labeling things, and... Uh, start your exploration of this map uh, and there you go so feel free to uh, play around uh, with any and all of these things play around with some of the different blending effects uh, maybe using uh, different colors and just see uh, what the computer will do in, in uh, generating some interesting and uh, visually stimulating areas and uh, perhaps it will uh, guide your imagination in a direction that you weren't anticipating to go so, yeah, if you have questions, comments, snide remarks, emotional outbursts, please go ahead and uh, toss those in the comments below, and uh, I'll see you next time.